So we are discussing in the last session of uh, that uh, uh, UI application. So MDG and G. So there are a couple of steps pending uh, to complete our UI configurations. So in MDG and G under UI modeling, so you see this manage UI configurations. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Okay. So this is the place where you can see all the UI applications, uh, FPM applications. So for our uh, data model, you can actually filter the data model over here. Uh, ZP is the data model and this is the application we created. So how we created this application? Initially, you can find uh, the template. Uh, okay, you can see USMD OVP gen template. We selected this template and click the copy button so that it created a, a, a Z version. So that is nothing but uh, uh, this particular UI application. So this is the step one. I'm just doing a quick recap what we uh, discussed in the last session. So we also mentioned a couple of steps here. Yeah, so first to copy this OVP application. Okay, after that, we need to link the data model to the Z application. So how do we link that? So in the application configuration uh, at the header level, Okay, so this is the main application configuration parent and there are two child components are there. The first one we call it as a CBA component. The second one we call it as a component configuration. Okay, and these are header level parameters. So whatever you can see in the down, all these are header level parameters means the basically the parameters at this application level. How these parameters are populated, all these values, when you copy that from the standard template, all these values go to automatically get copied, okay? We usually don't do anything. The only place we need to link the data model is here. So you need to click on edit button. See this, this edit button. And here, instead of providing the data model, since it is asking USMD underscore OTC, we need to provide our business object type. So business object type is nothing but we created a one at the data model level and we assigned that to our type one entity. So once you assign this business object type, then automatically uh, this particular UI application will be linked to your data model. So this is linking the data model. The next one is we need to add two UIBBs, uh, each UIBB for one entity, we have one type one entity in our data model, another one is one type four entity. So we need to add two UIBBs, okay? When you are adding the UIBBs, we also need to assign entity and for each UIBB, we also need to assign the feeder class. So those UIBB, adding the UIBBs and designing your fields, what fields to display on the UI application. So those all the configuration we do under this second child component configuration, the second one, okay? So once you click on this, it will take you to the fluid editor. So this is the fluid editor. So in the last session, we discussed about uh, uh, these three options. Okay. And uh, you can also find the two UIBs which we added. How to add these UIBs? Go to edit and you can actually click on plus UIBB. Either you can add form UIBB, list UIBB. You see all different type of UIBs are available. Okay. Once you add this UIBB, so now this is the standard, uh, uh, when you add the UIBB, this is the standard name. And we also need to provide our own configuration name. So it, it can be any name starts with Z or Y. So that's where uh, we added one form UIBB. You can see this is FPM underscore form underscore UIBB GL2. And the other one is the list UIBB. Okay. So now we also provided configuration IDs respectively. So select one UIBB and go to configure UIBB, okay? So 
this is the place where you can actually add uh, what attributes that you wanted to add to your the respective UIBB. So select one UIBB at a time, click on configure UIBB. It will take you to your, uh, now this, this place, whatever the area that you see, this is your form UIBB. You can add any attributes that you wanted to add over here. And all these attributes are coming up from your type one entity, some labels, descriptions, and all those things. Okay, so now you need to assign uh, uh, your uh, the type one and feeder class, right? So how do you assign first time when you are creating? You can also find over here uh, in the general settings. Go to feeder class. Okay, first time when you are creating, it will ask you to enter the feeder class name. So that's where we use this for the form UIBB. This is the standard feeder class name. And after that, you can also uh, once the form feeder class is provided, then we added uh, our type one entity. So this is your type one entity, which we added over here. And after that, uh, once you add your uh, type one entity and feeder class automatically, these attributes will appear. From there, you can drag and drop what attributes you wanted to display on your form UIBB. In the same way, we also created, I'm not changing anything. Okay. You need to select the second UIBB, which is list UIBB, and go to configure UIBB, and there you can add a, a, a feeder class and entity, followed by the attributes. So everything we need to add. So once this step is done, adding the UIBB uh, uh, and the entity and the feeder class, everything, the, sec the next step is maintaining the wiring. So this is where in the last session we haven't performed but we also did this communicator status setting. So let's finish this uh, fourth step as well, okay? To add wiring schema, so there he, you can find the tab over here, wiring schema. So click on this wiring schema. Don't change anything here. Just simply click on add wire. Okay, so when you, basically for every UIBB that you added over here, uh, uh, for every UIBB uh, here, you need to make an entry for uh, the uh, wiring as well for every UIBB. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Okay, so that's where I need to add two uh, wiring uh, entries. So first one, first I click on add button. So I can see this. Now when you do F4, here you get to see your uh, form UIBB and list UIBB. All the UIBBs that you added under you, uh, this uh, uh, section, over you page uh, schema section. So you will find uh, all, uh, oh, in the F4 over here. First, let's add your form UIBB. So this is my first one is my form UIBB. So when I select this one, it also asks for something called connector class. Okay. So this connector class as well, again, we need to remember the name of that connector class. So for form UIBB, this is the connector class. You can see here, I'll share these details again. Okay, so this is the you, uh, connector class that you need to use. Okay, so I'll provide the connector class name as well. Okay, and after that, uh, let's, okay, fine. So after that, now what else you need to provide here along with the connector class, port type as the lead selection. So there is something called port type, just select lead selection. That's it, okay? So this is what you need to maintain for your uh, uh, type one, form UIBB. So one entry is done. Now I'll click wire again. Now I need to make entry for the type for my list UIBB. Since I already added form UIBB, this time you don't see that. It only shows the ones which you haven't added or which you had to add. So since my list UIBB is there, so I just added. And for this one also, there is a connector class. It's a different connector class for your type force usually, okay? So this is the connector class. 